So I have been messing around with Blender 2.81 for quite a while and I have come to conclusion that the future procedural mastery videos should be on Blender 2.81 instead of 2.80. This is because Blender 2.81 has many significant improvements to the node editor. Now, Blender 2.81 has many improvements all over the place, but for this video I will focus only on the node editor, okay? Basically, my old videos are now outdated again, and if you watch those videos, you can see a few outdated techniques that uh, we will not use anymore. So, with no further ado, let's get started. Switch the main screen to the node editor and switch this one to uh, the 3D viewport. Okay. Now, just get rid of the principal shader for now because uh, this is about the demonstration of the new nodes instead. Alright. So, the first thing I want to show you is the vector math node inside the converter section. Now the vector math node has been around since forever, but but uh, in the past it had only a few different math operations, which is not very useful. But now we have all these extra math operations to play with. Now in the past uh, I used the uh, mix RGB node to uh, calculate some vector math operations. But uh, we will not do that anymore, except for some rare occasions when we need this vector slider. Okay, so we will use this uh, vector math node instead of the mix RGB to uh, calculate some vector math. Okay, and if you watch my scale tester tutorial, you can see that I created a um, calculate distant uh, node group. And uh, we don't have to do that anymore because the vector math node now has a distance uh, math operation, which uh, compare the two points and get the distance between the two points. And we also have the length operation, which expect only one point vector. Okay, and this is equivalent to uh, the distance node, but with one of the two input set to uh, zero zero zero. Okay. So yeah, that, and that is the first note that I want to show you in uh, Blender 2.81. The next one is the map range node. Now this node will stretch or compress a uh, range of, of value to a different range of values. Okay, so this is the input value. For example, I can put in let's say. A noise texture like so and let's render this maybe not and control shift click on this to visualize the uh, noise okay so the noise texture is in the range of 0 to 1 and uh, we can specify this as min the min is 0 and max uh, is 1 and we can stretch it to something like 0 to 3 and you can see that the noise is now much brighter and we can specify some negative value as well for example minus 2 so now the noise values is in the range of uh, minus 2 to 3 and you can also stretch a different range for example 0 0.5 so now the 0 0.5 value will be minus 2 and one will become three and anything outside of this range will be clamped if we um, turn on the clamp option we can also turn off the clamp option if we don't want to clamp the uh, output okay so this will be a very useful note that we will be using a lot in the future okay the next node is the clamp node this node will simply clamp your input value. For example, right now it doesn't do anything, but let's say 0 0.5. Now you can see that any values above 0 0.5 will be 0 0.5 instead. And anything below 0 will be 0 instead. 
So let's set this to point 1, maybe point 4. And you can see any doctor, any, any part that is darker than 0 0.4 will be clamped to 0 0.4. So this is a very useful note that we will also use a lot in the future. Okay, so that is the converter section. Let's move on to the textures. Okay, next stuff is the um, texture dimensions. In the past, we only have 3D textures. Now we also have uh, 1D, 2D, and 4D. Okay, so let, let's see 4D for now. Now the 4D texture is, uh, let's say, a bit tricky. The W value here, this is the fourth dimension of the texture. And you can see it as the uh, time dimension. For example, if you look at the sky and you can see that the cloud kind of changed over time, right? The time value changed the texture. And that's it. That is the 4D texture. And 2D and 1D texture is uh, very simple. Uh, this is 2D texture and uh, this is 1D texture. Now the 1D texture is um, uh, a bit uh, weird because we only have one input value here and we need to input a um, texture coordinate and uh, let's uh, separate I mean separate not combine separate XYZ generated and put the x-axis in here now this is 1D texture and you can see that it is a single dimension Okay, so pretty much all the um, 3D, 3D textures in uh, Blender has a um, dimension option here. The next one is the Voronoi texture. The Voronoi texture now has a position output. And this position output is particularly useful when we need to get the center of each cell. Okay. So this is the, the Voronoi texture and we can see that each of these cells seem to have a center. So this position is basically the um, location, the, the, the coordinate of that center. Okay, And we can use this position data to calculate a lot of stuff in the future. Next stuff is the white noise. Okay, Now, the white noise by itself is not very useful. Let's put in a texture coordinate like so. And you can see you can see that the noise is infinitely small and it doesn't matter how you zoom in or out. It's it's always the same noise. So by itself uh, the the white noise texture is not very useful. But uh, this is not how it is meant to be used. Okay, so let's uh, put in a vector math node like so, and change the operation to floor, and uh, maybe change this to object, and go to edit mode and scale this up a little like so. So now we have something like this. This is how the texture coordinate look like after the floor math. And uh, when we feed this into the white noise texture, we have something like this. And for every voxel in this uh, little cube, we have a different random value. And the value is within the range 0 to 1. Okay, so we can use this uh, random uh, value to do a lot of uh, different things thing. Now the white noise texture deserve an entire video on its own, so I will get deeper into the white noise texture at a later time. Okay. So next stuff is the mapping node. Now in the past uh, the mapping node does not have any inputs for the transformation. It only has one input which is the vector input like so. So whenever we need to specify a um, 
a variable to for the um, uh, transformation we can't do that in the past and we had to create a custom uh, transformation node for example in the um, scale tutorial I created a custom rotation node to rotate uh, the the, uh, the vector but now we don't have to do that anymore because uh, we can specify the angle uh, to rotate the vector in here so those are the new features of the uh, node editor in Blender 2.81 and uh, in the next video I, I will show you some basic technique to manipulate space and time okay I'll see you next time